I'm going to be comparing the 660S2 to the original 660S, as well as the Mesa 109 Pro, the Harmonic Dyn G200, and even the Sivga SV023. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today we're taking a look at the Sennheiser HD660 S2, which is a new version of the not that old HD660 S. I want to start this review off by saying a huge thanks to Sennheiser for sending out the 660 S2, and to channel patron Aaron for lending me his original 660 S. Aaron was also kind enough to send me a pair of Deconi pads for these, and so I'm going to be able to give you some comparisons of these two headphones, a bunch of other headphones, and talk about how the Deconi pads work on both. So there's lots to cover off, and before I jump any further into it, the other thing I want to mention is that this is the first ever video on Passion for Sound that also had a behind the scenes review. Now what behind the scenes reviews are, and you might have seen some of these in shorts on the channel, is it's a review where I sit here as I'm doing my listening and my sort of comparisons and taking my listening notes, I sit here with my camera recording and the screen recording and I talk through what I'm hearing for my patrons. It's available to the upper tiers over on Patreon and also for YouTube members at the insider access level. So if you want to know what goes through my mind as I'm listening and comparing products, then jump over and check those out for yourself. But for now, let's get into the review of the Sennheiser HD660 S2. The S2 versions of the 660s retail for $600, US making them a fairly expensive headphone in the scheme of things. And I know that a lot of us have been put off by that pricing because many of us are used to the original 600s, 650s and the 6XX being much, much cheaper. But back when those first came out, they would have been priced similarly if you take into account inflation, etc. And so I don't think these are necessarily overpriced, so long as you're looking at them in the sense that they're a brand new headphone and recognising that they probably will get cheaper over time. For example, the S1 as I'm going to call it, the S1 is now drastically reduced from its original price because the S2s come along. And no doubt one day in the future, who knows when, the S2s might come down in price, but for now I've considered them as a $600 US headphone. For that money, like with any of the 600 series, what you're getting is an incredibly comfortable headphone. Just like the 600s, the 650s, the 6XX, the S1 version, these are brilliantly comfortable. The reason for that is you've got these lovely velour pads, you've also got this split foam system in the headband so you can see there's a gap there, and that means the weight's distributed across your head rather than centering on the top. So these, like all their predecessors, are definitely all day wearers, no problems at all there. The build quality I think is probably a little bit below par for a 600 US dollar headphone, but that's only in terms of the look and feel. They definitely feel like they're going to live for many, many years as the older versions have as well. And so it's not a question of their longevity in terms of their durability, so much as the fact that when you compare them to some of the other headphones on the market around the same price, and I've got a bunch of them coming up, when you compare them to those, there's probably a few questions about the use of the plastics and just the general fit and finish. They're not bad, they're not going to fall apart, but they don't feel as premium as some of the others. While we're talking about the design and build, you've got these excellent sized, nice deep cups and pads for your ears, so these are going to be comfortable for almost all people, I think. I also think they look great, I like the new kind of rose gold or copper colour finish that separates the S1 from the S2, so the S1 has silver, these have that sort of coppery rose gold type look. But other than that, everything's pretty much what you'll expect if you've ever seen, owned or played with the 600, 650 etc. And that's to say you've got a very basic design that's comfortable, you've got lots of adjustment range here so they're going to fit larger heads, and then on the bottom of the cups we've got the same old two pin connectors. Now on one hand, I'm not a fan of bespoke connectors like that. It does make buying cables 
sorry about the clicking, it does make cables a little bit trickier because you can't just grab, say, a 3.5mm cable that you might have for your Hyferman or a mini XLR cable that you might have from some ZMFs. You are going to have to get a specific cable for the Sennheisers. But going beyond the connector used, the cables you get are quite good. They're very much a utilitarian cable, there's nothing flashy going on here, but they're comfortable enough to use, they feel pretty good in the hand, and they're going to last a long time. What you get in the box is a 6.3mm version, you also get a balanced 4.4mm version, and an adapter to go from the 6.3 down to a 3.5. So all bases are covered, and there's really no need to buy an aftermarket cable if you don't want to. And so beyond the cable options and quality, and the design and the fit and finish of the headphones, there's not much more to talk about other than how they sound, so let's jump in. Oh, but I forgot something. Before we get there, what I should mention is that the 660S2 has also changed impedance. The older S1s were a lower impedance headphone, they were adapted to try to suit the range of devices people are using them for, but for whatever reason, maybe it's from feedback from the community, what Sennheiser have done is they've taken the new S2 back up to being a 300 ohm headphone. It's still pretty sensitive, so in my experience, it's going to work with most things you plug it into, but given that it is a higher impedance, it's going to take more voltage to drive. And that means that some devices like smartphones and smaller dongles are going to start to run out of puff because they just don't have enough voltage. For any desktop devices, dedicated portable devices like powerful DAPs, larger dongles, all of those sorts of things are going to be completely fine, but you might struggle, as I said, from some of the basic cheaper dongles. These are really more of a desktop style headphone though, they're very open, they let a lot of sound out and in, and so realistically, I think most people are going to be plugging them into a desktop device, and any mains powered device should have plenty of voltage for these. And so now that I've covered that off, let's talk quickly about the sound quality of the S2 on its own before I get into a whole bunch of comparisons. I'm going to be comparing the 660S2 to the original 660S, as well as the Mesa 109 Pro, the Harmonic Dyn G200, and even the Sivga SV023. So stick around, make sure you watch all of it, there's lots of ground to cover, but we're going to start off just by talking about the S2 on its own. If you're trying to work out what piece of gear you should buy next, then the Passion for Sounds Recommends database might be helpful for you. In the description box of every single video, just down here, you'll find the Passion for Sounds Recommends section. If you click on this link, it'll take you through to the Passion for Sounds Recommends Airtable database. What you'll see in here is every single product that I've ever reviewed and recommend, in some cases products that I own but maybe haven't reviewed but recommend. And then once you're in here, you can use the filter button up here to decide to filter by things like whether or not the product type is for a headphone, for example. So maybe you're looking for a headphone. Filter it by that, and you can now see every headphone I recommend. You can sort it by price, which is the default sorting, or any other sorting method that you want. And then once you've got the list of products you're looking for, you've got the links to the reviews of the products, and then also purchasing links for global retailers and also regional retailers for the US, Australia, Canada, and the UK. So feel free to play around with this, sort it, filter it however you want to, it won't affect what anybody else sees, and you can hopefully find just the right products for you. I hope this is helpful, and now let's get back to the review. The first thing to strike me about the sound of the S2 was it's got a great sense of articulation. You can hear the leading edges of notes, the definition of notes, very clearly from these. As we've come to expect from the 600 range, they're fantastic for vocals as well. They've got a nice sense of richness and smoothness, but also texture and detail as well. And the good news is that they work equally as well for male or female vocals. I don't have the original 650, 600 or 6XX here, but my sense is they bring just a bit more clarity to the sound than something like the 650 6XX, and they bring a bit more richness to the sound than something like the 600. So they're kind of a nice melting pot of both, and I think that's fantastic. The S2s aren't a particularly bassy headphone, I'd say, but they definitely have more extension than the older models, and that means they give you a good sense of rumble and depth when needed. But don't think of these as a specifically bassy headphone, they're still not. They're just able to go deeper when needed, and they're definitely better than the original 600 series that I mentioned before. I do think that tonally they're a little bit warmer than neutral, but they're not thick or overly rich, so much as a slightly smoother sound, I'd say. They've got a fullness and a smoothness to them, but they're not thick, they're not bass monsters. They're not like, say, an Apple's Caspian, which I love, but which is very much a thick, bassy headphone. And something that that kind of hides is the fact that they're actually sneaky good with detail retrieval. They don't shove details in your face, but as I was listening to them more and more across a bunch of different tracks, there's never anything missing. It's not highlighted, it's not enhanced, but it's actually always there. So they're doing a really good of resolving details and texture and information, but they're not highlighting it as I said. 
The soundstage they create isn't huge, but there's a good sense of space between instruments. It's still mostly inside the head, but it doesn't ever feel congested. And I think largely what they're doing is they're producing mostly left to right sound. They do have a bit of depth, but they're not throwing a huge deep stage. So these are not going to compete with your HD800 or HD800S, but I think in the realm of the 600 series, they're excellent. For those of you who are into classical music, I think they're good for classical, but in a relaxed kind of way. They've got enough texture and detail to be enjoyable, and their sense of scale and space in the soundstage is excellent for classical within a fairly intimate presentation. So in other words, as I said before, they're not an HD800, they're not going to throw a massive soundstage, but they've got enough space, enough layering in the soundstage to give you a good sense of scale and depth in the orchestra. So from a soundstage and general enjoyment point of view, they're good for classical. If you're really into your details and your texture, you probably do want to go higher to something like the HD800S. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're into music that's got a bit of punch and drive and rhythm to it, I find the HD 660S2 to be good enough with those sorts of genres, so rock, blues, funk, etc. They don't have a lot of punch and drive to them though, so you're not necessarily going to find yourself tapping your foot and bobbing your head, but you will definitely enjoy your listening sessions. They've got enough bass and enough extension that the music's got body and soul and some rhythm, but they don't have a sense of drive to them that some other headphones do. And so all in all, they're just a great all-rounder, and I think that's really what the 600 series is about. They're a headphone you can put on and do anything with it. You can listen to music with them, you can watch movies with them, you can play games with them, although we'll get to that in a second as to which one I think is better. And so there's really nothing that you can't do with these. I've also used them for voice calls and editing and mixing videos. I wouldn't go so far as saying they should be used for translating mixes into other devices, so making sure that your mix is a good tonal balance. They're probably a bit too coloured for that but they're not massively coloured, so they're good enough for general editing and mixing. And so having covered off the sound of the S2s in general, let's talk now about how they compare to their older brother, and not by much, but their older brother, the S1s. Now for this testing, I was actually switching the pads from my S2s onto the S1s, so we've got identical pads in play. There's no difference in pad wear involved here. And what I can say immediately is that the S1s have a leaner, drier sound than the S2s. Interestingly enough, as I show you the graph on screen, the graph doesn't really show what you hear from these. And that's because there's obviously more going on in terms of the way the driver is tuned, the way it's damped, etc. The sound from the S1s is noticeably drier, leaner, and with more upper mid-range emphasis. Some of that could come down to the extra sense of bass extension from the S2s, but it's definitely more than that. And the reason I say that is that when I switched onto the Dakoni pads onto the S1s, with the Dakoni pads, they started to sound more like the S2s then, and yet as I show you the graph, the graph is wildly different. And yet to my ears, as I was going back and forth between them, what I'm showing you on screen with the Dakoni pads on the S1 and the stock pads on the S2, that sounded closer, not the same, but closer than the stock pads on both. So it's a lot more than just the frequency response going on, there's a completely different behaviour of the driver in the S2 compared to the S1. And what that specifically means is that if we're just talking about the stock pads again for a minute, with the stock pads on both, what you're going to get is a bit more detail and texture from the S1, but it's going to come at the expense of some of that soundstage size. So with the stock pads on the S1, you're getting a flatter, wider soundstage, rather than a deeper soundstage like the S2. I think the overall soundstage width isn't vastly different between the two, but I do think the sense of depth is much in favour of the S2. Having said that, what the S1's going to give you is a more intimate presentation of vocals, so it brings kind of the position of the singer or the main instrumental closer to you overall, and it makes picking out individual sounds in space for things like gaming probably a bit easier. So those of you that like a bit more upper mid-range energy, detail and focus, you're still going to like the S1 better. For those of you that want to get more immersed in the music and the space in the soundstage, that's where I think the S2 is a bit stronger. Now, as I said before, if you like the sound of the tonality I'm describing from the S2, that being that slightly sort of smoother, slightly fuller sound, then you can get close to that by putting the Dakoni pads on the S1s, but you're never quite going to get the soundstage performance that the S2 has. And so what that means is that if you've got the S1s already and you wish they were just a little bit richer and smoother, then do check out the Dakoni pads. I didn't take a note of which ones these are, Aaron might comment in the comments down here, but they've got the leather on the outside, they've got a sort of velour or alcantara or something on the surface that touches the skin, and then the inside is a perforated leather. Now I should add that if you can see in there that I haven't got the foam inserts in with the Dakonis, don't worry, all of my listening was done with the foam inserts, so you're getting consistent sound performance with either the headphones I was trying. I've just chucked the Dakonis on here for shipping back to Aaron. 
So Aaron, if you can comment down below exactly which pads these were, that would be really helpful. And thank you so much again for sending out your S1s. Now, while I was saying that, some of you might have heard a bit of noise coming from these, and that is something to be aware of. As I said before, with the build quality, they're not as premium feeling as some of the other options on the market, but they're also not too bad. You're going to get a few creaks and cracks as you move them around. They don't feel quite as premium as something like the Harmonic Dyn G200 that I'll talk about in a moment, but I also don't think they're a bad option by any stretch. And so just to recap before we move on from these, what I'm saying here is that if you need detail and focus of the sound for things like gaming, then I think the S1s are the choice. But I think for everything else, the S2 has it won. I find it an easier and more engaging listening experience. The soundstage is clearly better. And I never felt like I was missing out on detail or like I was overly smoothed off, so much as that it's a little bit enhanced from the S1s, which is great for gaming, but maybe not so much for music. I should also add at this point that once again, being a high impedance Sennheiser headphone, they're wonderful on tubes. But moving on from there, the thing I most wanted to know was how they really stacked up. At $600, US is it worth the money, or are there better options around either for less, the same, or just a bit more? So let's jump into that now. The first non-Sennheiser comparison I reached for was these guys. These are the SV-023s from Sivga. They're also a 300 ohm headphone, which was part of my reason for choosing them, because both of these models are going to pair beautifully with OTL amps, other tube amps, and solid state of course as well. The SV-023 comes in $100 less than the 660S2, and so I was curious to see if they could hold up against them. One of the tracks I used for this test was Death Letter by Cassandra Wilson, and the first thing I noticed on that track was just how good the bass depth is on the S2s now. Sennheiser have really worked some magic at getting the bass to extend down without boosting it. It's very balanced, it's very neutral bass still, but it extends nice and deep. The vocal is clear and present as you would expect from a 600 series Sennheiser, and the guitar has a nice balance of the attack of the strings and also the resonance. As I listen more, you could also hear the vibration of the strings, and it sounded to me like one of those national steel guitars, and that's the kind of detail and information that I said before isn't shoved in your face, but it's there to hear with the 660S2. Moving from the 660S2 over to the SV-023, and it was immediately evident that they've got different tunings. But both were very enjoyable. The SV-023 is brighter, it's got a bit more bite to the sound, but other than that, they're very comparable headphones. My first thought that I shared in the behind the scenes review with patrons and channel members was that I think it's a really tough battle and the $100 difference is a little bit hard in some ways to justify between these two. The extra treble from the SV-023 brings out a little bit more of the detail in the sound, but as a bit of a trade-off, the vocals in the mid-range are a little bit less present. And that's neither good nor bad, it's just different. So the SV-023 is going to give you a slightly less rich sound, it's going to bring out a bit more detail and attack, but it doesn't give you quite the same sense of body and fullness in the vocals that the S2 does. And so what I'd say here is that it's kind of a wash between these two. I don't think I would say that one is clearly better than the other, so much as they're different. If you're hearing me talk about the S2, and you're worried that maybe it's going to go just a little bit too kind of full for you, and you like a leaner, crisper sound, then the SV-023 for $100 less could be a fantastic choice. They're definitely a headphone I love, it's one of the reasons they're on the wall behind me, I think they're a great choice, and for $100 less than the S2, I think they really stack up well. The other thing I should mention is that the build quality is kind of different. In their own way, the SV-023 feels a little bit cheap, because I feel like the headband is just a little bit lightweight in a way. It's made all of metal, with the exception of course of the actual leather part there, but it's made all of metal, and that might be beneficial for many of you compared to the plastic. But it also feels kind of lighter, and not flimsier, but just kind of less robust somehow. I don't even know how to describe it. On the other hand, you do have metal, and then you've got these lovely actual wooden cups. So from that point of view, there's benefits in the build quality in both directions. Both are excellent all-day wearers, very comfortable no matter how long you're wearing them. And so I think I'd probably split these based on the budget you've got, and also the sound style you want. If you want that bit of extra attack and aggression, and maybe your budget's not quite as high as the S2, don't feel like you're losing out by going here. But if you do like a slightly fuller, more vocal-oriented sound, then the S2s are worth that bit extra for that particular sound signature. But really only for that. Otherwise, I think the SV-023 should be equal pegging on your list. And so I'm going to put down the SV-023 here and move to my next comparison. Next up, from the freshly created hole on the wall behind me, we've got the Harmonic Dyn G200s. These are a headphone that I absolutely love in terms of their sound quality. Their comfort's a bit hit and miss for me, as I talked about in my full review of them. But they're a headphone that I keep around because I just enjoy their sound so much. These come in at $100 more than the 660S2. 
And so this was a case where I was curious to know, is it worth spending a bit more? Are you getting a significant jump in sound quality? As I've already alluded to, I think in terms of comfort, the S2s win it hands down. But these aren't bad, they're just a bit finicky to get fitted, and one of the issues is that the adjustment ratchet on one side for me is a little bit loose, so I put it on my head and it slips. But other than that, they're not a bad, uncomfortable headphone, it's just the S2s are exceptional. One of the tracks I used when comparing the G200s and the S2s was I'm Free by The Who. This isn't a particularly good recording, and one thing that it showed me was straight away, the S2s handle bad recordings well. They don't sugarcoat it completely, but they also make it still enjoyable and easy to listen to. However, moving over to the G200s, it allowed me to hear a bit more clarity, a bit more detail and attack from the guitars. And the vocals from the G200 were more present, more defined, there was more texture in them. The G200 probably is comparable in some ways to the sound of the original S1, where it just pushes some of that upper mid-range forward a bit more than the S2. But having said that, the G200 did actually overemphasize that from a naturality point of view. I still found both of these headphones probably equally enjoyable, but if you're going to talk about actual kind of tonal accuracy and realism, I think the tonality of the S2 is closer to the truth. I feel like the G200s are fun to listen to and enjoyable because they sort of play with the sound a bit. They bring that mid-range forward a little bit, particularly the upper mids, and they bring a sense of excitement as a result. But it's almost like that thing where a more saturated image on a TV can be a bit more exciting, but it may not be the same as what you see if you turn around and you look at the real world. And that's kind of what's going on here. The G200 manages it well, it doesn't get fatiguing or harsh at all, but I don't think it's as natural and honest as I do feel like the S2 is. And so again, this is one of those cases where I'd say both are excellent headphones and it kind of depends on what you're looking for. If you want a listening experience that is easy, consistently enjoyable, and just kind of gives you everything you need without pushing anything at you, that's where the S2 is brilliant. If though you're looking for something a bit more exciting, then spending $100 more and trading off a little bit of comfort I think is worth it for the G200. But at this point, the headphone that I was really itching to compare to the S2s was a bit more expensive, but one that I also consider something that I can wear all day, I can use for anything and everything, and that I absolutely love. And that's the Meza 109 Pro. I'm meant to be sending these back to the distributor, and I'm kind of stalling because I like them so much. And I'm glad that I did because I think they're an excellent comparison to the S2. And the reason for that, as I just said, is because they're incredibly comfortable. They're an all-day wearer, and they suit the use as being both a gaming headphone, a music headphone, a video call headphone, really whatever you want to do, the 109 Pro works just as well, in my opinion, as the S2. Keep in mind, you're spending an extra $200 US over the S2s if you go for the 109 Pro. So it's not exactly a small jump in price, and I was curious to see if it was worthwhile. One of the tracks I used when comparing these two was All I Can by Jamie Faulkner. Jamie Faulkner is an Aussie blues guitarist and singer, fantastic musician if you haven't heard of him before. And starting off on All I Can with the S2s, the sound was great as I've already covered off. What was interesting to me though was that when I moved over to the 109 Pro, the sound of the 109 Pro with its extra treble energy and it's quite a high treble peak, it threw the tonality of the guitar off just a little bit. There was a touch too much twang from the strings for me. And that's where, again, I think the S2 is just really nicely tonally balanced. Admittedly, you're going to get a bit more texture and clarity from the 109 Pro, but at the same time, it can get a little bit sibilant sometimes, depending on the recording and your source chain. And so it's one of those things where I think, depending on the track, the S2 can actually be better than the 109 Pro. But having said that, when I changed to a different track, and this time it was Terrified from Dizzy Heights, on Terrified from Dizzy Heights, I couldn't get the smile off my face when listening to the 109s. The opening kick bass in this track has fantastic punch from the 109s. The separation of sounds is nothing short of exceptional, and it's just a very enjoyable listen. Going back to the S2, and it's still a fun listen, but I didn't get that same sense of punch in the bass. I also didn't get the same sense of separation of sounds. And whilst it's an easier listen, and it was still very enjoyable, it didn't engage me in the music in the same way. The 109s were exciting and fun and put a smile on my face, whereas the S2s were enjoyable. And that's probably a nice way to sum up the sound of the HD660 S2. It's an enjoyable, all-day, easy-to-listen-to headphone that doesn't cut any corners, it doesn't do anything wrong, but it's also not the most exciting headphone around. This is a sit back in the armchair, have a whiskey or a coffee or a hot chocolate or whatever your favourite drink is. It's a headphone for grabbing your favourite drink, sitting back in a relaxing chair and just letting the music wash over you and enjoy it. You're probably not going to be tapping your foot and bobbing your head a lot, but you're absolutely going to enjoy everything you like to listen to with it. They pair beautifully with any kind of source I tried, whether it's solid state, whether it's tube, whether it's analytical, whether it's a little bit warmer, they just work well with everything. 
It's a beautifully balanced tonal response. It's a really nicely designed headphone in terms of comfort and long-term wearability. And there's honestly very little to complain about. I know some of you will say, and fair enough, that the build quality doesn't quite match some of those others I talked about. But I think the durability of that build quality has been proven time and time again by all the other 600 series. And so it's more of the aesthetic and kind of the tangible feel of it rather than it actually lasting a long time. And so for me, I think the 660S2 is an excellent headphone if you're looking for what I've described. I do think the other three options I've talked about here in this review should also be on your list. The Sivga SV023 brings a little bit more excitement and a little bit lower cost. The Harmonic Dyn G200 brings a bit more excitement and energy at the cost of a slightly less natural tonality and also some slightly lesser comfort and of course a bit more money too. And then when you go to the 109 Pro, I do think in almost every way it is a better headphone, but it is going to be a little bit sibilant for some people and maybe not as relaxing to listen to if you're looking for that kind of, as I said before, armchair easy listening experience. And so I do recommend the Sennheiser HD 660S2. I don't think it's beating anything hands down in its sort of class area, but for what it's doing, what it's intended to do, I think it's a wonderful headphone. I do think it's a worthy upgrade over the original HD 660S, but if you're looking for a headphone for things like gaming, voice calls, just an all day wearing easy headphone, at the new, and I don't know if it's a run out price or an ongoing price, but at the new pricing where I'm seeing the S1, don't forget about that one too. It's still an excellent headphone, but I do think the S2 is a slightly better headphone from a musical point of view. And so as always, I'll hunt around for some links, pop them in the description below. They might be affiliate links, so thank you to anyone that uses them and helps to support the channel. And as always, I hope you found the review useful, helpful, informative, etc. If you have, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button and consider subscribing and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.